Turtles are one of the oldest reptiles on our planet. Fossil remains indicate that turtles have been around for over 200 million years. Witnesses to an Earth dominated by dinosaurs, an age when reptiles ruled the world. Arabia's beaches have been used as nesting sites by these marine reptiles for at least half of this time. Today, our waters are frequented by five of the world's seven marine turtle species. Marine turtles are incredibly long-lived, reaching a lifespan sometimes of up to 60 years. These placid, majestic creatures are cold-blooded reptiles, and as such, their distribution is limited to the warmer seas of the world. Turtles are found in all of Arabia's seas, from the Gulf of Aqaba, through the Red Sea, Gulf of Oman, and Arabian Sea. We travel to Ras al Jins, a protected area on the easternmost corner of Oman, where the Gulf of Oman meets the Arabian Sea, and where the largest nesting site of green turtles in the Indian Ocean can be found. Welcome to Ras al-Ghinz. Shukran, Shukran, thank you. You have a Burma? Uh, no, we must go. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. you can uh, take uh, from uh, the office. Okay. Welcome, uh, thank please. You. The government of Oman has been quick to recognize the significance of these nesting turtle populations, creating protected status for the principal nesting beaches and training wardens to monitor the populations. <laughs> Shukhati <laughs> Tagging has been going on for years using flipper tags. The program in Oman has been tagging turtles every year. Well, sea turtles migrate. That's part and parcel of their life. They spend some of, some of their life in an area where they mate and they nest on beaches, and then they'll migrate to a different part of the world and spend time growing up there. We don't know from one population to another where those, where those migrations take place. We do know from tag returns that some of the Omani turtles from Ras al Had, these are green turtles, are migrating up through, through the uh, straits and into the, into the Arabian Gulf proper. Uh, we do know that turtles from Oman also migrate down to the coast of Yemen and even as far away as Socotra. Uh, there's a couple of tag returns from the Red Sea even, so the, the distribution is immense. Oman is one of the very rare places where turtles can be watched, and turtle nesting attracts enormous numbers of visitors to Ras al Had each year. Turtles have this, this 
natural charisma. They really do. They, just to see a turtle or to see the little hatchlings run down the beach and re-enter the sea, it's something that pulls at people's hearts. It pulls at my heart. Uh, it's something that's been going on for years. And I think that maybe 20, 30 years ago, people just weren't as aware of, of the fact that there were turtles out there. It's only through modern research, through patrols on beaches, that we identify more and more nesting habitats. You're right, in, in Oman, they've been looking after turtles for, for many, many years. Well, the natural biology of turtles is, is such that we, we will always have these migrations backwards and forwards. We're going to have an international component always. And turtles just, they don't understand the concept of borders. They just simply do what they've been doing for millions and millions of years. Now imagine that in one country you work on conservation measures and you, you put in management interventions, we have conservation approaches, all of these that help with the conservation of turtles in that part of that, their, their life. But then as they move and migrate to a different country for another part of their life cycle, if you don't have matching or complementary conservation measures there, then you basically could be losing all of the good effects from having protected them in the first country to start with. The bottom line is that because they move and they go across international boundaries, and so there has to be regional dialogue, there has to be regional programs that look into conservation. Uh, there has to be an understanding, at least at the management level, that this isn't a, a one-sided deal, that this is a multi-partner project. Throughout their long lifespan, female turtles only leave the water to nest, and males never return to land after hatching. Males are easily identified by their long, fat tails and claspers on the front flippers, which they use to hold on to the female whilst mating. Green turtles start reproducing between the ages of 25 to 35. A female breeds every two to three years, and it is believed that she migrates thousands of miles to return to the same beach from which she hatched to lay her eggs. Males also return to their home beaches, waiting offshore for the opportunity to mate with the fertile females. Most nesting takes place under the cover of darkness, but can continue into the early morning. At any point prior to the laying of her eggs, she will return to the sea if spooked. Digging with their front flippers, the female makes a hole about two to three feet across. Once satisfied with this first depression, she turns herself around, digging a deeper and narrow inner chamber with her hind flippers. This is the egg chamber, and once ready, she will lay up to 110 perfectly round eggs. Once she starts laying, a process that can take up to one hour, nothing will deter her from completing the process. She finally fills in the inner chamber and covers the site with sand. The whole process from coming ashore until returning to the sea can take between two to three hours. Back underground, these eggs take about six weeks to incubate. Immediately upon hatching, the baby turtles must dig their way through the compacted sand to the surface. The temperature of the sand during incubation will determine the sex of the turtle batch. Above 30 degrees produces females, below males. Sometimes the top layer of eggs will produce a different sex to the lower levels, or the whole batch may be one sex only.
Reaching the open air, the hatchling orientates itself towards the sea, drawn by the reflection of moonlight on the sea's surface. Turtles, however, lead a precarious existence. Sadly, the problems facing hatchlings are daunting. It is not surprising that only two or three of every 10,000 hatchlings are thought to survive to adulthood. Reaching the sea is not only exhausting, but to do so they run a gauntlet of predators, which wait in ambush. Not only is a turtle's life full of dangers from natural predators, it is, sadly, easy to come across turtles in distress in these waters. This young green turtle had somehow managed to get inside an abandoned steel mesh fish trap called Gargur. By the time our support diver managed to reach this unfortunate turtle, she had stopped moving. Abandoned traps such as these are thought to litter the seabed around Arabia's fishing grounds in their thousands. We had no idea how long she'd been caught inside the trap, unable to reach the surface for air. It seemed too long. 